One of the least understood areas of the engineering licensure process relates to the question of what constitutes acceptable qualifying engineering experience for the purpose of licensure. That is why in this week's edition of Pass the PE Exam, I'm going to talk about the experience requirements that you'll need to satisfy to take the PE exam and how you can find out if you're on the right track before it's too late and you realize that you missed out on what could have been years of experience towards your PE license. This is such an important aspect of seeking your PE license because if the current experience that you are getting is not acceptable in your state, then you will need to work additional years before you can sit for the exam in that state or go somewhere else. So understanding this topic can truly impact how soon you get your PE license. Now, before I jump in, let me remind you that most successful engineers will tell you that getting their PE license was the biggest career growth driver that they've experienced, whether it was due to a promotion, salary increase, or just more exciting projects to work on. You want to get your PE license. However, preparing for the PE exam can be a real challenge. But through this and other videos on this channel, you will learn everything that you need to know about the licensing process, including PE exam preparation. Firstly, it is very important to know that not all U.S. states require the same PE exam education requirements and that you will need to contact your state board or visit their website to find out exactly what experience counts towards taking the PE exam in your location. Each state acts independently to set its own education experience and residency requirements. State requirements can vary greatly from state to state. Some states require that you have a Bachelor of Science degree from an ABET accredited engineering program with no exceptions, while other states permit you to take the PE exam with an engineering technology, physics, math, or chemistry degree, or without any degree at all, providing you meet experience requirements. These requirements are nearly always greater for applicants without an accredited engineering degree. For example, in many states, it is required that you pass the FE exam and have four years of engineering experience prior to being accepted to sit for the PE exam. However, in some states, like California, graduates of accredited engineering programs are permitted to take the PE exam after gaining two years of experience. That's a big difference, and you need to be aware of that. The National Society of Professional Engineers, or NSPE, developed a compilation of state laws that allow candidates for a PE license to take the exam before gaining four years of experience. I have provided a link to this document in the description of this video. The document is from 2018, so you should check with your specific state, but the document may be helpful if you are deciding in which state you might want to go through the process. It gives you an overview of all the U.S. states and territories. Although all states vary greatly on the requirements to take the exam, I'm going to provide you with some general information here in regard to the type of experience you will need to take the PE exam. Again, this information came from the National Society of Professional Engineers, and I have provided links to their website in the description. It is generally required that all of the candidates' engineering experience be obtained post-graduation. However, if you have worked while attending school, possibly through internships, and if that work fits the criteria for qualifying experience, you may qualify to take the exam in less than four years following graduation. That's what happened to me. However, that assumes that you can prove that the internship experience qualifies as true engineering experience. In my case, I was able to receive almost one full year of credit based on the engineering internships that I had throughout college. I added up all of my summer and winter internships. So it is possible I'm living proof of that. Now on the flip side, if you are not a graduate of an accredited four-year engineering program, in order to be eligible to sit for the engineering exam, you will most likely need more than four years of qualifying experience, maybe even eight to 12 years, depending on the specifics of your education. 
Again, each state engineering licensure board can provide information on the exact number of years of experience required. I'll also mention that in some states, a master's degree may be accepted as one year of experience towards the experience requirement. This is another aspect of the guidelines that I was able to take advantage of through my MS degree in civil engineering. Now, in order to constitute qualifying engineering experience, the experience must meet a number of criteria. And these are also spelled out on the NSPE website that I have referenced in the description below. First, the experience should be from a major branch of engineering. Second, the experience must be supervised. It must take place under the ultimate responsibility of one or more qualified engineers. And generally, qualified engineers must be licensed professional engineers. However, some jurisdictions will accept experience supervised by a qualified unlicensed engineer in industry situations where there is no offering of engineering services to the public. Third, the experience must be of a high quality requiring the candidate to develop technical skill and initiative in the application of engineering principles and sound judgment in reviewing such applications by others. Basically, you have to be doing highly technical work to get accepted. Fourth, the experience must be broad enough in scope to provide the candidate with a reasonably well-rounded exposure to many facets of professional engineering, along with highly specialized skill in a particular branch of engineering. Finally, the experience must progress from relatively simple tasks with less responsibility to work of greater complexity involving higher levels of responsibility. In other words, they really want to see that over the four years, you are progressing and moving from basic engineering work to more complex projects, which makes sense. Now, this part here is really important. In assessing whether the candidate is sufficiently competent and responsible to be entrusted with or independently engage in engineering work or to supervise engineering work, state engineering licensure boards look for evidence of independent decision making an assumption of personal accountability in design and application. Now, there are two last points that I really want to emphasize here, and one I just mentioned. These points can make or break your application for PE licensure. When writing out your experience, you must provide evidence of that independent decision making and assumption of personal accountability in design and application. I see so many engineers get rejected because they explain their experience as being part of an engineering team, and they don't mention making their own decisions. Secondly, make sure early on that whoever is supervising you is an acceptable person in the eyes of your state board. If that person is a licensed engineer, then he or she is most likely accepted. But if they are not licensed, you must ensure that your state finds them as acceptable. This is a pitfall that I see many engineers struggle with. They work for someone for years only to find out that that person isn't seen as acceptable to the state board and therefore the experience underneath them doesn't count towards their PE licensure experience. And this can set you back years. I hope you found this video to be helpful. In an upcoming video, I will provide some tips on how you can document your experience. Another common pitfall of PE exam applicants. Past the PE exam videos will publish weekly, so please be sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss something that could make a substantial difference in your exam result. And please, I encourage you to ask questions and leave comments below this video and I will respond to you. And please let me know if there's a specific topic you'd like me to cover or a question that you need answered. Past the PE exam will have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the PE Exam.